not really gone as long as I believe. There will be another angel around the throne tonight. The love lives on inside of me and I will hold on tight. It's not my place to question, only God knows why. Just jealous of the angels around the throne tonight. Always made my troubles feel so small. And you were always there to catch me when I'd fall. In a world where heroes come and go Well, God just took the only one I know So I'll hold you as close as I can Longing for the day when I see your face again but until then, God must need another angel around the throne tonight. Your love lives on inside of me, and I will hold on tight. It's not my place to question, only God knows why. Just jealous of the angels around the throne tonight, singing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just jealous of the angels around the throne Spin. 
to God in prayer. Heavy trials and temptations. Is there trouble?
And good morning to everyone. Uh, persons who uh, wish to view the body, you can do
So tired of being a straight line And everywhere you turn The vultures and thieves at your back Some keep, some pursue Keep on building the lies That you make up for all that you lack Which don't make no
pleasant good morning again. Uh, this time we would like to, to commence with the service for our love, Hayden Joseph. I would just like you all to stand for just a brief moment of silence. Okay, so commencing now, we just want to keep Hayden Joseph in mind and uh, celebrate his life and also keep in mind that his family and the pain that they are going through right now. So we'll start now. Okay, thank you very much. Um, at this time, I would like you all to have your seats. And I am going to call on Jesse, uh, Heron's niece, who is going to do a few words for you all. Good morning, everybody. I would like to thank everybody for coming to share your support for the past few days. And for coming today. <laughs> to share your support with our family. <laughs> Hidden will truly be missed by everyone here. And those who couldn't make it as well. <laughs> I can assure each and every one of you that I will never find a person <laughs> as happy with no matter what he had or who he was with as he did. He was one of the most genuine persons <laughs> you would come across. He could tell he didn't want, and he wouldn't stay back so long. <laughs> he always wanted to share love and happiness, and doesn't matter if he's so far, if he's lying, doesn't matter where he was, and we see anybody you know, he would never pass them straight. <laughs> Hayden has left a hole in everyone's heart and he will truly be missed. But I can assure you that he's watching us right now and laughing because everybody tell him how long will you cry for? One day? Two days? But now? Life will never be the same. No party, no family gathering, no birthday would ever be the same. Everybody used to wait for him. They come, they dance and have fun. Doesn't matter where you're going, who you're going with. He will truly be missed.
this time, at this time, we're going to have the. Okay, at this time, we're going to have the reading of the Psalms 23, followed by a word of prayer from the pastor. Uh, those of you all who are familiar with the Psalms 23, you can um, say it aloud with me. And those of you all who are phone savvy, you can pull it up on your, on your phones as well. Uh, reading from Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You pre prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I will now ask um, the pastor for today's uh, proceedings, Brother Darrell Trabley, to have an opening prayer. Let us pray. Our blessed Father and our God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts for the strength that you have given us to bear even up until today. We thank you, Father, for all those who are gathered here. And we pray, Father, your blessing. And we also pray, Father, most of all, for your comfort within their hearts, within their souls, within their spirits. We pray that everything that will be said and done will be to the honor and to the glory and to the upliftment of the name of Jesus Christ. May your presence continue to be with us both now and forever. May you forgive us of our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. If you have your song sheets, I would like for you to turn with me to number 30. Number 30. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Hymn number 30. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, present my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, present my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Present my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Present my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen.
Okay, at this time, we would like to call on the eldest niece of Hayden, Sarah, who will say a few words. We will be reading a psalm. Oh, psalm 90. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, Return ye children of men. For thou for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which grew it up. In the morning it flourished, and growing up in the evening it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our inequities before thee, our secret sins in the light of countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten, and if by reason of strength they may be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. We know the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto thy children. And let the beauty of the Lord, our God, be upon us, and establish the, the work of our hands upon us. Yeah, let the work of our hands establish thou it. Amen. Okay, good day everyone again. For those who don't know me, I'm Sarah, I'm Hayden's eldest niece, Hayden didn't have any of his, any children of his own, I mean, as far as we know. So being the firstborn grandchild, I form a special bomb, bond with my aunts and uncles. I've known Hayden my entire life, from baby to now. So my version of Hayden may not be everyone's version of him, but I'll tell you all this. Hayden always asks me, every time I see him, who's your best uncle ever? He'd always expect, expect me to say him, and I always did because it was the truth. He was the only one that really and truly showed us unlimited affection. And everybody could agree, he was like a kiss kitty. Hayden, I never told you this before, but because of you and mama, I am brave today. I don't care about others' opinions of me because you always showed me courage and fearlessness. When I was little, I remember you always pulling me to dance. Every time you dance, which is always, and to dance at home or in front of crowds, even dancing with people we don't even know. You always held my hand and say, don't worry, you just dance. As big as I am today, you would have still done that. Little did I know, it's courage you were teaching me. So thank you for that. Because of you, I am not afraid to speak out, even if I'm the odd one out. Hayden, you were more, you were one of the most affectionate human beings I've ever came across in my life. From small, he would hug us and kiss us up and told us how much you loved us. And uh, even as big as I am hidden, you did it. You didn't care who was there. Drunk or sober, you didn't care. Without a care, you did it. A lot of us should start practicing that. For sure I will. Because today I understand even though you would lie and drink, you never wanted to see me do it. You would get vexed if I make a joke about drinking or liming or smoking. You didn't. You didn't have much to offer, but you showed us genuine love and good energy. To me, 
In this world, that's what matters most, is sharing genuine love and good energy. Because people remember not what you give them materialistically, but what memories you shared with them. They remember the good times, the endless laughter, and how you made them feel. So today, in front of everyone, that love and care that you give us, Hayden, I want to tell you thank you. Thank you for allowing me to see that a good soul conquers hearts. That's what you did to all of us here. You conquered our hearts. I love you, and thank you for being part of my journey. I pray that God judges you on your kind heart and glorious soul, for you have blessed us all with that good energy and radiant smile of yours. I'll forever miss you, Hayden. I hope you're the life of the party in heaven, too. Show them angels how to dance. I love you until we meet again. Rest in peace. Thank you. Let's turn to number 51 in your song sheets. Number 51. The little interesting thing concerning this particular song is that the psalm that was just read, the author took the psalm and he put it into verses and this is what it is we have here. So number 51, O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. O oh God, O oh help in ages past, O oh hope for years to come. O oh shelter from the stormy blast, and O oh eternal home. Under the shadow of thy throne, still may we dwell secure. Sufficient is thine arm alone, and all defense is sure. Before the hells in order stood, or earth received a frame. From everlasting thou art God, to endless years the same. O God, O help in ages past, O hope for years to come. Be thou my guide while life shall last, and our eternal home. Amen. At this time, we're going to have the eulogy read for us, done for us, uh, by Brother Mogish. Ready. Well, my name is Amukesh Radhe. First of all, I would like to express my appreciation for all of you attending the service to honor the life of Hayden Joseph and to say our final goodbyes. As you two would have lost a friend and a loved one. Hayden was my little brother, my son, my nephew, a best friend and the most loving individual anybody could meet. My theme for this eulogy is what can we take from everything that Hayden has taught us? The song that is playing there, Hayden sent that to me a couple of weeks and he said, Mukesh, she said, I know you go through a lot. In this life, we have to understand that we don't go through it without pain. And I want you to listen to it. I said, you always sending me something crazy. When I hear this, it's just like in Jesse Hayden just flying above us this morning. Sharing fun memories. Today is profoundly sad for me. 
as writing Hayden's eulogy was never on my agenda. He was supposed to write mine. I have shortened this eulogy as it would take a couple years to speak about this unique individual called Hayden, who kept me talking for the last 30 years. How I knew Hayden. I first met Hayden at a political party meeting. He was just seven years old. His mom was part of the group. Auntie Shamin, can you recall that? I said, Auntie Shamin, what is he doing here? She said he's giving them chats at home and they'll bust his mouth, so I had to bring him to the meeting. That day, he asked me a million questions, meeting him for the first time, a seven-year-old. I eventually took him to see where I was living. And that, my friends, would eventually turn into years of the most loving, kind, crazy, stubborn individual called Hayden that became attached to my family and by extension so many of you. Hayden and my youngest cousin Aaron would be at my house at 7 a.m. My father would play all fours with them and send my mother's blood pressure right up. He will take them to the Karani swamp. My mother would refer to him, Haden. He was a foundation member of the Spring Village Missionary Baptist Youth Group and a former treasurer of the Cubs Association. His involvement in the Cubs has etched beautiful, fond memories in all who came to know him. Aaron and Kyron, you all somewhere around. They were responsible for putting his nickname, Scooby, as he would make the most beautiful impressions of Scooby-Doo, the cartoon character. Till today, or past days, they would refer to him as Scooby. Hayden Joseph is the only person on the face of this earth who could tell me what he want, do me what he want, and I would say absolutely nothing. All the sisters always come in the group and say, I will never see anything that Hayden is doing. You will buff us up. The pain of his death swept across the US, UK, Canada, and other parts of the world. As past club members and even your family flooded social media with grief calls and shock. Although he left this massive dent in the hearts of the Cubs family, we can close our eyes and picture his beautiful smile, whether it's on Bassi Street, Cooperative Street, Kalpu Street. Nobody can walk with that hand twist at the back and bump and walk like Hayden. Absolutely nobody. That is unique to Hayden. Forever will you be with us and overshadow our sorrows. And I'll share something with you. One of Hayden's first job that I got for him, he called me one day and he said, you gotta come down here now. I say, but I'm in St. James. He say, fella, you need to come now. If you don't come now, you're gonna have big trouble here. So I left my work and I went down. When I got there, Hayden will tell me, we have a man to beat. I said, Hayden, I don't fight. What craziness are you telling me? He said, we have a man to beat. We have a man to beat. And he was going on and on and on. The boss came out, so I went and I was talking to him inside and when I got back out, Hayden had organized all of the workers. He had everything going. So I said, Hayden, are you ready to fight? Fight? I tell you I come here to fight? And I was just left there standing all by myself. But that is the unique individual we're talking about, Hayden. How to distinguish Hayden Joseph? Hayden, you can come. No, I on a mission. For everyone who knew Hayden, you can testify. He was always on a mission and had some scene to handle. We yet to find out what this scene to handle is about. Don't study that, don't hot your head, fella, don't study that. His way of coping with things. How many of us got the finger in the air? This is the finger I'm talking about, by the way. There is no need to ask when that finger goes up, what's going to happen next. 
There is nothing you can do to hold back Hayden from heading home. That is the sign. Guys, I'm clocking out now. And the infamous one day to dead. Hayden, when are you going to change? Boy, one day to dead. One day to dead. Always living to please himself and no one else. One day at a time. Hayden, despite everything, retained God in his heart. Friendship. I'll pay anybody a million dollars if you can tell me how many friends they don't have. They'll never be able to work that out. His debt tried to facilitate it a little bit in us trying to ascertain how many friends he had. And we still can't figure it out. And we will never figure it out. And by now, I am sure the friendship angel is having a time with him right now. What we do know is that his loyalty to all is unmatched. He is well known for his chow expertise, dancing skills and disappearing acts. Just when you're looking for him, he is gone. Tomorrow, I will be looking for him and he is also gone. <laughs> so all of his friends, I sympathize with you as nobody will ever, ever be able to fill the gap that Hayden did. Never. In your lives, in everybody's lives. Things that Hayden and I would argue about, these stupid things. I said tomatoes. He said it is tomatoes. I said, Hayden, can I get some chana and potato? What kind of person are you? What is that? I don't know what is that. He said chana and aloo. We all say numbers. He don't say number. I have the number. I will give you the number. We all say you all. Or you. How we distinguish Hayden. The events leading up to his death. On Holy Thursday, Hayden called me and we were discussing going Mount St. Benedict as he and I usually do. I said, hey, and I would not be able to make it. My work is a little bit hectic. My birthday is in one week's time. Can we do it? And maybe we can do something for your birthday as well. Hayden's response was, make plans for yourself. Don't make plans for mine. I said, it's going to be 40 in August. We'll have a big line. I shared this with his family. Hayden told me, he said, Mux, I will not make it to 40. I'm telling you all, don't make plans. I will not make it to 40. Do study it. On April 15, Good Friday, Joey called to inform me that Hayden was ill and I rushed over. Hayden was taken to the hospital and was conscious and remained conscious until April 22nd, despite what people were saying. We, we spoke to him. He had everything together. On April 22nd, Joey, you're around? Joey could testify that Hayden was minutes away from leaving us. But for some reason, he was holding on. And so was all of us. Awaiting the miracle that would not be. Auntie Sharman and Joey kept telling me that same night, Hayden's gonna wait until your birthday on April 23rd. I said no. I said, Hayden, don't do that to me. At 2.05 a.m. on April 23rd, my birthday, Joey called to say, you know what I'm calling to tell you. Hayden never missed my birthdays and just had to make it the last. That is what you call commitment, dedication, and loyalty. At any functions at my house, Hayden always stayed nothing less than two hours. The doctor said Hayden passed away just before 2 a.m. I recorded that. Less than two hours into my birthday. Papi, I wish I was at your side. Instead, you choose your last one and three quarter of hours to be at my side. Hayden's family, his mother was his idol. And I swear she'd kill someone and he would kill someone for each other. 
It is a hard time as the family has lost a gem, a brother, uncle, cousin, in-laws. Hayden has renamed everybody in his house and almost everybody on the outside to the point that we don't bother you anymore. Whatever he calls you, you just say yes. Auntie Shaman, I pray God's richest blessings on you and your family at this time of grief. Never question God's work, but believe that Hayden is with his maker. Smiling down without pain, sorrow, and this crazy sinful world that has gone out of control. You could not have asked for and made a better child. And my closing remarks. Hayden's contract on this earth came to an end, and not by mistake, but by the calling of God at the appointed time. Let us take a page from this loving, free-spirited guy, who if he could get up and say a few words would say, do hot all your head, lady, don't worry about me. Hayden, an angel sent for 39 years, to bless and touch the lives of so many people. If you knew him the way I do, you could just close your eyes and see him looking down from heaven with a beautiful smile, the most unique thing about him. It is hard to imagine life without Hiran. Oh, not calling me to tell me some rubbish. But I know that he'll be here right throughout the whole process. I am so grateful for everyone who is here. But that guy that is lying there, that's just the shell. The beautiful person inside of him has taken flight. This morning, it is my prayer and I pray for his soul. I know he is in great hands and flying with the rest of the angels. Before I close, I would like to call Aaron, Hamid, and Kyron. Three of the foundation members of the Cubs who were with him right through. And he considered them part of his life. Hiran, you'll always be remembered as a Cubs member, as part of our family. It's not gonna be the same, bro, and I love you. I'm reading from the book of Luke, chapter 13, and I'm reading the first eight verses, and this is where it is we'll be speaking out from. Book of Luke, chapter 13, picking up at verse 1. There were present at that season 
some who told him about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than other Galileans, because they suffered such things? I tell you no. But unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Or those eighteen on whom the tower in Siloam fell, and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all the other men who dwell in Jerusalem? I tell you no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you and praise you for your blessed word. And as our hearts have been blessed by the reading of it, may you now bless our hearts through the expounding of it. That the Holy Spirit who gave the men of all the utterance to write these words, now give us the understanding of it. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Generally, whenever the Bible wants to reinforce something, it repeats it. And in this short passage that we have read, our Lord Jesus Christ makes one particular statement twice. And he said this much. I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. That's in verse 3. And then in verse 5 he says, But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. To give some context to what we're talking about this morning. Our Lord Jesus Christ, while he was on the face of the earth, just as any ordinary human being, would get news from time to time, from place to place, event to event. On this particular occasion, according to what verse 1 tells us, there were present at that season some who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. To go back a little bit in history, you would have heard that name Pontius Pilate. That's the same man that Jesus Christ would eventually stand before to be judged and eventually would be condemned to be crucified. Well, this was before then. History tells us that Pontius Pilate was a man who was very vindictive, which simply means this. If he did you something or if you did him something, he would never forget it. He wouldn't forgive it. And all that he would do is that he would look for the opportune time to give you it back and more. He and the Galileans, and to understand the Galileans, you look at a map of Israel. To the south were the Judeans, to the center was the Samaritans, and to the north were the Galileans. The Galileans and the Judeans were all Jews, but you had north and south. Just as in Trinidad, you have north and south, and you have two different cultures. Same people, two different cultures. The Galileans were more country folk. They were more rustic. They were more, for the want of a better term, common people. But they were loving people. They were devoted people. They cared about each other an immense amount. Community spirit was something strong among Galileans. Somewhere along their history, they ended up in an argument or they ended up in a dispute with Pilate. Eventually they went and they tried to sort it out and as far as the Galileans were concerned, they sorted it out. But as I said, Pilate was not that kind of a man. And so what Pilate did was this. The Galileans had gone to make some kind of a sacrifice. Whether it was goat or sheep or bullock, some kind of a sacrifice. While they were doing the sacrifice, and without it being on their minds, Pilate takes his soldiers and sends them to slaughter the Galileans. So while these men were doing something righteous, they were doing something holy, suddenly soldiers come upon them. They're not prepared for war. They're not prepared for battle. They're not prepared for fighting. And so the soldier begins to kill from a side. To the point where, and how the scriptures describes it, 
whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. The animals were killed, the people were killed, and you couldn't tell which was animal blood and which was human blood. It was bloodshed. Now surely, if people died that particular way, it must mean that they were wicked people. Think about it. Good people don't die badly, do they? See, the understanding was that these backward Galileans, because of the fact that they were bad people, here's how our Lord puts it. Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than other Galileans because they suffered such things? Do you think that these men died in this horrific, horrible, bad manner because they were worse people than everybody else? Are we to look at the way that we die to be the sum of the way that we lived? That's what our Lord was saying. And he answers the question. I tell you no. It was unfortunate that the Galileans should be slaughtered as they were making sacrifice and killed along with the animals that they were going to be sacrificed. So there was both animal sacrifice and human sacrifice. But our Lord makes it abundantly clear that the way that they died is not a reflection of they being better or worse than anybody else. And that's important to understand. Our Lord draws a second example. So they told him about the Galileans, but now he draws a second example. Verse 4. Or those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? So he takes his attention off of what took place in the north and he comes down now in the south. Where the south people, the Judeans, thought that they were better than the people up in the north. They thought they were smarter, they were more intelligent, they were more cultured than their northern brethren. It's like the city folks thinking of themselves better than the folks who are in the country. And so what was happening is that there was this tower, this tall building. And the building fell down on 18 men and killed them. So the thought now begins to run. Is it that these men were such wicked men that they had to die under such bad circumstances? It must be. Because good people don't die badly, do they? Or do they? And so our Lord uses that opportunity again to raise up this idea. Do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem, the capital of the city? I tell you, no. Many years ago when I was a little boy, I heard of a story. Man was driving down the Uriah Butler Highway, and somewhere around the vicinity of Carini, around there, it his car ran off the road. And it ended up landing and it hit some mangrove and it also hit a tree. How the car was flipped and turned, the man couldn't get out, but worse than that, the tree that he struck had a bee nest on it. There was a beehive on it. And all the bees now came out and they began to sting him. While he was being stung to death, the car caught a fire and he got burnt. So he got stung and then afterwards he got burnt to death. And I remember as a little boy, the question was raised just as it was raised here 2,000 years ago. That must have been a wicked man for him to have died like that. But how do we know? You see, if we go to judge people and judge their lives by the way that they die, then Jesus Christ is the worst of all human beings. Why would I say that? Our Lord Jesus Christ died by crucifixion. The Romans only crucified murderers, thieves, and people who tried to overthrow the government insurrectionists those were the kind of people that the romans crucified 
In other words, the worst within the society were the ones deserving of crucifixion. If I judge Jesus Christ on the basis of his death, then he's the worst of all sinners. But I know better than that. And at the same time also we have other people who have done worse. Hitler is responsible for killing at least 6 million Jews. And by the way, that's just Jews. He killed blacks. He killed what you call gypsies or Romani people. He killed homosexuals. Anything that he thought would destroy the purity of the Aryan race, he killed. So the 6 million is only Jews. That doesn't take into consideration the others, including Germans. And how does he die? He puts a gun to his head and he pulls it and that's it. No pain. There are many others who have, done, who have done more wickedly or equally wickedly or less wickedly, but they have done wickedly and they have died on the bed of comfort. The room was probably air-conditioned. The breeze was blowing nicely. They were on a soft, warm bed and they closed their eyes and they passed away. Now, because of the fact that they passed away in such a wonderful and beautiful fashion, does that make them good? And the answer is absolutely not. So how we die, the circumstances under which we die, is in truth and in fact no reflection of our lives then what then is really important? Twice our Lord put it this way. But unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Repentance and perishing. I just want to talk a little bit about that word perishing just for a bit so we could understand what our Lord is saying. Jesus Christ did not say that unless you repent, you will die. He didn't say that. Because whether you repent, whether I repent, and the word repent simply means to change. The picture that is given for the word repent is that you are walking down a road and then you turn around 180 degrees and you walk in the opposite direction. So if I was walking east and I repented, it means I'm now walking west. If I was walking to the left and I repented, I'm now walking to the right. It means a complete turnaround. Not little changes here and little changes there. A complete turnaround. And he said that unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. He does not say die. Christians die. Muslims die. Hindus die. Atheists die, Africans die, East Indian dies, Caucasians die, intelligent people die, not so intelligent die, rich people die, poor people die. Death is a universal disease that has been passed on to each and every human being. And even as I was saying last night, whether you're a human being, whether you're an animal, whether you're a tree, you're a blade of grass, death has been passed on to you. Everything at some point in time dies. There are trees right now in the United States, they're called sequoias. They're more than 3,000 years old. But at some point in time, those sequoias will die. It's just the nature of things. So whether you're a Christian, you're not a Christian, it's not going to make a difference. We're all going to die. As I said last night, life is a terminal disease. Once you're born, you are condemned to die. But our Lord is not saying that those who don't repent will die. He says you will perish. Now in our English, if a man died, or if he, we say he perished in a fire, basically we mean the same, the same thing. Not here. The word here for perish is a Greek word that indicates a loss of original purpose. Want to say that again? Perishing means a loss of original purpose. So let me draw an illustration. And our Lord Jesus Christ used this illustration also. He said, when you make wine, you put it into new wineskins. 
Some Bibles have it as bottles. The word basically means a wine skin. What they would often do is that, for example, you have a goat, you have a sheep, you skin the animal, you tie up the ends, you clean it out, and you use that to store wine inside of it. Now, when an animal hide or skin is young and it's fresh, it's very flexible. When you put the grape juice inside to become wine, what happens is that because of the fermentation process and the production of carbon dioxide, the hide begins to swell. If you put that wine into an old skin which is hard and not flexible, it will break, it will burst, and you will lose the wine. So whenever you have to make wine, you use a young skin and a flexible skin. So what he said is that you don't put new wine into old skins because the skins will perish. It does not mean that the skin will disappear. It does not mean that the skin will cease to exist. It does not mean that the elements or the atoms go into nothingness. What it simply means is that the purpose for which the wineskin was created for, it can no longer do that. If I had a glass for drinking water and the glass slipped out of my hand, and several have, and it falls on the ground and it breaks, all the, I can scoop that up, everything in the glass is still there. But the purpose of using the glass can't do it again. Because it is destroyed and it has perished. So the question now is, when Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you will all likewise perish. What then is this loss of purpose for which he was talking about? I'll go to Solomon to help us understand a little clearer. In the Old Testament, in the book of Ecclesiastes, the King Solomon was going through what I think many of us go through at some point in time in our life. And that is, what is the purpose of life? Why are we here? Why do we exist? What is the purpose of us being here on the earth? And for the book of Ecclesiastes, for the 12 chapters, he keeps going back and forth as to what does life really and truly mean and what am I supposed to accomplish. He talks about in his own life he planted gardens, he made pools of water, he drank wine, he had wives. And yet still he turned around and he says all this is vanity, it is emptiness. He says, whatever it is your hands find to do, do it with all your might. You have to build a house, build a good house. You have to buy a car, buy a good car. You have to get a job, do the best at it. And yet still he says, all this is emptiness. He says, have a wife, have a husband, have children, raise them up. Rejoice with the wife of your youth. And he still turns around and says, all this is vanity, it's emptiness. It never really truly satisfies us at our deepest point and in our deepest core. In chapter 12, as you come down to verse 12 and 13, here's what Solomon says. Let us hear the conclusion of the matter. In other words, after all of my ramblings about what life should conclude should be, let us find a concluding statement. Let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the entire duty or this is the all of man. Man was created to serve God. That's your purpose. In serving God, part of it would be your works that you do towards others. What you do for yourself or you're able to help others. But your purpose is to serve God. And if you have failed in that, it does not matter. The millions or the billions you may have, it does not matter. The fame that you may possess. You've missed the point of life. So what is our Lord saying? Except you repent, you shall likewise perish. When a man 
fails to serve God. And this is how it is, our Lord put it, to his own people. Except you believe that I am he, you shall all die in your sins. Our service to God begins with our faith in Jesus Christ and living for him. That is where it begins. And if we have not reached that point, we have not begun to live as yet. But except you believe that I am he, you will all die in your sins. And when a man dies in his sins, he is eternally separated from God in a place called hell. Whether you choose to believe that or not, that is up to you. I am stating what the Bible says. When a soul goes to hell, the purpose for which you were created is lost. And thus, you perish. Nobody in hell serves God, which was the purpose for which God created you. And if you are not fulfilling the purpose for which God has created you, then you have perished. Not necessarily died, but certainly perished. This now brings us to the con conclusion. How do I prevent myself from perishing? I think this verse is probably familiar to one and to all, whether Christian or not. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him, and what's the words? Should not perish. If you desire, you can't stop yourself from dying, but you certainly can't stop yourself from perishing. That is to be eternally separated from, from God, and that can be done through belief in Jesus Christ. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We close our eyes, we bow our heads at this time. Our brother G1, could you just come and lead us in a word of prayer as we bring this particular part here? Um, of the sermon to an end. Oh, thank you. Our oh, Heavenly Father, thank you, O oh Lord, that we could be here this morning in support of our departed brother and his family. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the words that have been spoken, words of encouragement by many. They express their heart's feeling for what has taken place here. This is something we know we can't change. But as your words have been declared, O oh Lord, there is hope. None shall perish as long as they trust in the Lord Jesus. He came for that purpose. And we are thankful that he left heaven's glory and came here for that purpose. So the words have been declared and it is intended to bring comfort to the hearts of people here. Not to strike fear in their heart, but to give them comfort, O oh Lord, and hope. A hope that leads right into eternity. So we thank you this morning for this time and for all the people who are here. The words, the hymns, all that has taken place. The end of it, O oh Lord, may everyone here honor and glorify the name of the Lord Jesus, our Savior, for what he has done on their behalf. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you, um, uh, Brother Jiwan and Pastor Darrell. At this time, we would open an invitation to the floor, um, relatives, friends, anyone who wish to have, um, to say a few words on behalf of Hayden Joseph. Very briefly, we are on a very tight schedule. So I'll give that opportunity to anyone who wishes to come and say a few words. If not, we will proceed on to the next term. Anyone? Is there anyone? OK. Once? OK, I know sometimes people are very afraid to come up, but I know it's in your heart. And I think Hayden knows exactly how, you know, we feel about him. All right. From here onwards, 
we're gonna have the closing song in a short while all right at this time what I'd like to do um, Natasha I would invite the family I know you would want to place your flowers and so on we would ask the family uh, to come do that um, I'm not rushing you all but we are trying to keep everything in line with reaching at the cremation site at a particular time following that I would like Roshni and the other few Cubs members who would also do the same all right following the family so at this time we would like to ask your family to come Okay, I'm sorry to have to be pressing, all right? So I know it's a painstaking process, but all right, Roshni and uh, Kimberly, the members of the Cubs Association, can you all organize uh, to come forward, please? Okay, I would like you all to come this way. As soon as the family members have moved, we are trying to maintain the COVID protocols.
Iran, Tyron, Hamid. Members, members of the Cubs Association who are here, we ask you all to come forward, please, as we are trying to speed the process. Yes, sir. Dean. Okay, so we are seeing persons, even from the cops, when you have placed the flowers, to come around this way. Right, persons, when you have placed the flowers, come around this way. Thank <laughs> you. 
If there are other persons wishing to view the body, even if you're not putting flowers, please uh, do so now. We're we'll leaving shortly. Okay, last call for persons wishing to view the body. Okay, at this time we would like everyone to just settle for a couple of uh, minutes while I call on Pastor Daryl Trabley to do the final song and the closing prayer. If you have your hymnals, uh, please turn to number 14. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it. Afar. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melodious songs of the blessed And our spirit shall sorrow no more Not a sigh for the blessing of rest In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. 
Jehovah bound Jehovah Father above. We will offer the tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore let's pray our oh, father no god to you we commit ourselves today. To you we commit our bodies, our minds, our soul, our spirit. To you, O Lord Father, we lay ourselves before you and plead and ask for grace and strength, hope and comfort for this day. Grant to us, O Lord Father, our daily bread. We pray, dear Father, that the grace and the strength that is needed to get through for today, O Lord, and we know that you are God who is gracious a God who is everlasting and ever loving and will indeed hear our prayers and will indeed give us the strength to get through today. And Father, for the days that may lie ahead of us, whatever you have in store for us, may we take it and live it for you even as Moses has declared. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Bless and protect all those who are here. Bring comfort to their hearts. As we go now to our different places, whether it's to the site or to our homes, may you carry us in peace and in safety. And may the God of all mercy, the God of all love, the God of all caring, and the God of all compassion, to the only wise God, immortal, invisible, be glory and praise, worship and honor, both now and forever. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. All right, so very quickly, before we leave, on behalf of Auntie Shamin and her family, they wish to thank everyone for the support in the time of sorrow. Their prayers, your thoughts, attendance, whether it's at the hospital, at the nights, persons who assisted in the preparation of meals, the much needed courage, support, and love was much appreciated. It is her pledge that God be with you all and that you continue to support after the funeral. It's going to be a long road for her. I also want to take this opportunity to thank Navin for an exceptional job that he has been doing over the last couple of days in terms of facilitating all of Hayden's friends who live abroad through the social media platform and the exceptional quality of work that he did persons were able to share in this time of sorrow that we are sharing with so Navin once again thank you very much it was well appreciated when we get to the cremation site it's gonna be a very fast procedure as brother Darrell Trabley has other commitments um, so we're gonna go straight into the prayer and into the cremation and you all are free to stick around, you know, while the cremation is in process. So we would like the process to be very smoothly. As I said, there are five cremations this morning. So I am asking everyone present here, the COVID pandemic has not ended. For the safety of your families and for yourselves, try to maintain the, pro the, the COVID protocols even at the cremation site. You know the basic things I don't need to let you know. So at this time, we're just going to take five minutes so Navin can wrap up and then we would log back on at the cremation um, for, for, the, for the live streaming. All right. So thank you all again for coming and we will see.